Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of my Hackintosh build. So in the last video we just sort of went over all the parts that are going to make up the Hackintosh. Um, if you haven't seen part 1 there's going to be an annotation up there and a link down in the description. But this is the part that I am most excited about. This is the build. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It's just, it's, it's just so cool. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So first port of call is to get the motherboard set up. I like to do virtually everything outside of the cases, it gives me as much room to work with as possible, uh, especially when taking into account that this is a mini ITX uh, system that we're working on here. So this is the motherboard. Um, it's pretty much the cheapest mini ITX motherboard the Gigabyte do, but even this was pretty damn expensive. Um, but considering I've got Hackintosh in mind, they are just by far and away the best manufacturer to go with. Now believe it or not, I've only actually built AMD systems in the past, so I was absolutely shocked when I found out how much sheer pressure I had to put down on that little retention arm when installing this processor. I honestly thought I was going to break something, but as you can see there, it's um, installed nicely. Next up is our RAM. Um, this is about as simple as you'll get. This isn't the prettiest RAM in the world, but given the fact that it'll be covered up by the graphics card 90% of the time, I really didn't want to pay extra for some flashy heat sinks. Now it's time for the cooler. This actually turned out to be an absolute nightmare to mount on the board without mucking up the thermal paste. Um, as it's compatible with numerous different Intel and AMD sockets, it became a real balancing act uh, when it came to where I placed and how much pressure I put on the screws. In terms of the thermal paste then, I decided to go with something a little better than the stuff Zalman provided with the cooler. So I went with a tube of Arctic MX4. Um, I applied a small grain of rice sized line on the CPU. Didn't bother to sort of spread it around, as pretty much everyone at this point has come to the conclusion that it's just simply not worth it really. So now that the thermal paste is on, we can finally mount the CPU cooler onto the actual processor. Um, installation issues aside, this, just, this cooler looks just beastly on that little mini ITX board um, and I'm really really happy I bought something better than the stock Intel cooler. So last thing to do then is to plug the little 4 pin uh, CPU fan into the motherboards and there we go that is our motherboard looking absolutely beastly. So now we've got to get onto the case. So this is your first real look inside the beautifully designed Bitphoenix Phenom case. It is just Gorgeous. The black and white colour scheme and bold clean lines just scream minimalism. And as we fit in a full length GPU in the system we have to rip out some of the old hard drive bays. Um, it's all toolless which makes things much, much easier. The case comes with one 120mm intake and one 120mm exhaust fan. I'm actually going to rip that exhaust out as the CPU cooler makes it practically redundant. So let's actually start building. First things first is the power supply. This actually turned out to be a really, really tight squeeze. As the power supply is modular, all of the cables sort of stick out 15mm more than they would on a normal unit. Um, however, after a little bit of shimmy in here and there, and after tightly screwing the back plate in, everything fitted inside the case absolutely beautifully. And there it is, the beating heart of our system, the power supply installed. Next up is the IO shield. This is one of my absolute pet hates of pretty much every PC out there. Ugly ass IO shields. Even though I'll virtually never see it, I'm actually considering painting the IO shield black or white to match the rest of the system. But now, here we go. It's time for the motherboard installation. There were already four pre-installed standoffs on the motherboard tray, so it was really just a case of lining the IO up um, and just screwing the board in. And Holy shit, I cannot stress enough how awesome that cooler looks. It just looks beastly inside that little case. Next on our little checklists are the hard drives then. Now this case uses this weird, flexible tool the system which personally I just didn't find very effective at all. It uses these pathetic little push pins that sit on these stupid rubber grommets and sort of loosely fit into the hard drive mounting holes. Um, in the end I just gave up and dug out some proper hard drive screws and it's been working much better since. Um, the actual sort of pinch mechanism though that you, that you use for getting the drives in and out of the system, uh, they, they just work really, really well. Right then, here we go, the almighty cable management. Luckily this case had a hell of a lot of room behind the power supply to tuck all of the unused cables, and the fact that I opted for a modular power supply in the first place made things a lot easier. 
The front panel connectors on the door could be hidden behind the hard drives, and the connectors that needed to be plugged into the front of the motherboard could be routed through the gap in between the drive cage and the motherboard tray, making this, to be honest with you, a really, really easy system to work inside. And there we go, the finished product. I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Um, I'm not 100% convinced on the SATA cables, to be honest with you, but really, it's not a massive issue when considering it's going to be covered up by this guy. This is our graphics card, of course, the GTX 660. Um, the copper piping and the glossy black fans look absolutely killer in this system. Um, I'm not 100% sort of convinced on the blue PCB, but uh, I can deal with it. And there we go, we're all done, the system in all its glory, ready to be converted into a Hackintosh. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, the system was a hell of a lot of fun to build and this video was a hell of a lot of fun to record. I hope you're excited for parts 3 and 4, but um, as always guys, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.